I got this computer back in 2020. It's been a great machine. This is an HP EliteBook 840G7. It's been my daily laptop driver since well, the end of 2020, essentially about December-ish. I think I got it in like August, October, November, and it took me a few weeks to actually open up the box because, well, that's what it is. I did uh, cover up the HP logo, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I just happened to like, uh, just, I think this just looks better. It's a nice machine. It runs OpenSUSE, as you might, the sticker might suggest, and it runs it quite nicely. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm doing a memory upgrade. So unfortunately, this computer around Christmas time suffered a bit of a uh, memory failure. I did a little write up on that in cubiclenight.com. I've written about my adventures with this machine on cubiclenight.com. It's been a great machine. When I got it, it only had eight gigabytes of RAM in it. One, one of the SODIMM slots were taken up from factory. So I added a 32 gigabyte DDR4 SODIMM and installed a one terabyte NVMe. And since then, it's basically been great. I made this my main system, supplanting my Dell Latitude E6440, which is also a great machine. It's a fourth generation Intel Core i7, so it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, and it's not as great on battery life as this thing is. Or at least I can get more battery life on this than that, unless I add additional battery modules, but that's not really fair. This has been great. Let's say the weakest part of this machine is the keyboard. I've had to replace the T key, the, um, the thing broke and I, uh, the little hinge broke. So I had to get a replacement key and hinge. So now it looks goofy. So I keep it covered up with the uh, silicone membrane. Although I probably should have done this from the very beginning because I have kids. I think you have kids, you gotta do this. It's not as comfortable to type with this, although it is kind of breaking in. So it's a little bit better, but uh, it's still not quite as nice as typing without, but I think that I will, I will suffer that little bit of you know additional pressure needed for the sake of keeping my keys in better shape, or you know, so the keyboard lasts longer. I will replace this keyboard when the another key fails, which is likely to happen because it's not as durable of a design as what was once common on uh, on laptops. Like Dell probably makes the best keyboards, or they used to make the best keyboards. I don't like their new ones either. I think the, uh, the general degradation of keyboard design is a case where Apple basically ruined the industry with their uh, fancy designs, which made things, you know, everyone has to copycat them because of the look and it's just, it's just not as good at, and for numerous reasons. So recently I had some bad memory in this machine. I figured it was the 32 gigabyte DDR4 module that went bad. So I purchased another 32 gigabyte module, but after doing some additional testing, it ended up being the eight gigabyte module. This guy, which came from factory, and so I removed this, and that solved my problems. But before I realized that this was the bad module, I just assumed it was the 32 gigabyte module because that's just how um, things would go for me. I personally just expect the worst possible uh, situation to happen, which would have been, I guess, both modules, but anyway. So this is the bad module and I took it out. It fixed my, uh, the errors in the system, the, um, the different file system, butterfs errors that were happening due to bad memory. This came in the mail today, another 32 gigabyte module, which will, I may as well just install and show you how great this thing is to work on. So first I need to shut this thing down. I'm certainly not selling or shilling for HP, although I do appreciate their uh, some of their business practices. I'm very confident saying this is a very this is a great machine. I do enjoy this machine, and let me show you some of the reasons why. So to access the the inside of this, there are five screws. None of them are hidden behind any feet. Why they hide screws behind feet? is beyond my understanding, but I think it's just bad design. So this has five screws that hold on the pan. I'm calling it a pan. 
looks like a pan. I wouldn't call it a lid. Regardless, lower pan. And then... That's it. And then these screws... These screws are captive, so they don't actually fall out. They have a little... little retainer there. Can't see them there. There's a little bit... Basically, they're... They're held captive, not not by this thing, but by another, like a little uh, a little thing. You can't actually unscrew it. Well, I think if you tried hard enough, you could remove it, but uh, what's the point in that? So I also like the fact that this thing is pretty well ventilated. The vent along the bottom. Uh, obviously, if it's sitting on, you know, a comforter or something, or a couch, a fluffy couch, probably not a good idea. Otherwise, it has great airflow. So here's the 32GB uh, SIM, not SIM, so dim that I installed shortly after getting this machine. I will say this battery is is fading, so that's unfortunate. And I think I'm going to take this as an opportunity to clean that because it's open. So I'm going to go blow this off. I'll be right back. Okay. Nicely cleaned off. So much better now. I just want to show you how easy it is to, to get to things here. Here are the speakers, right here. To replace them, they're just held in by some rubber, rubber grommets and then it uses these foam pads to hold them against the lower pan. Although that is a little bit problematic because these do collapse over time and can cause some rattling, but that's easily fixed when it becomes a problem. The, uh, the battery's easily replaced too. Remove some screws. And then you can just disconnect it there. There is a WAN interface here. However, this does not have the, um, the antennas or the SIM card. So that's whatever. I'm sure I could probably find a way to make it work, but I'm not sure why I would bother. I mean, it would be handy. All right, so here is an additional 32 gigabyte module. Uh, they don't match. That's okay, I won't see it. They do have the same specification speed-wise, so that should be fine. This is just as easy as sticking it in there and then pushing it down, which you know, if you've worked on any laptops that don't have soldered in memory, that's, I guess that's how they are, all are. I think I did say about the NVMe here. And there you go. That's everything. The nice compact design, and I really appreciate how easy it is to just get to things, to do upgrades. I think outside of putting a, a larger NVMe, I don't see any other upgrades I can do to this machine. Memory's maxed out. The um, Wi Fi is fine. So there you have it. The nice thing is, I haven't lost any screws. So there's no like digging around looking for you know, where I misplaced my screws, which is nice. It's a matter of these little hooks here. Kind of hooking it here in the front. Pushing it down, down the edges, and screwing it back together. Now let's turn this thing on and see if it complains about the change in memory. So it says the memory system size is different from the last startup. Most common reason is the removal of memory from the system board. Pressing enter will record the new configuration. If this message persists, verify that the memory modules are installed correctly. I wonder why it didn't say removed or added. See there, I have I have 62.2 gigabytes of RAM, so I guess some of it's used for, uh, you know, other things. I think OpenSUSE is perfect for this machine, not because I have an almost unhealthy obsession with it or anything like that, but it just runs great. I don't have to mess with it. Everything is supported right out of the gate, you know, by the kernel and everything else. So it's pretty great in that regard. Having that memory issue earlier was having errors in the file system. After removing the two corrupt files that were there, 
that were noted by the, you know, in the journal and re-adding the good copies, it was able to fix all the rest of the errors and everything continues to roll along. So I don't actually look forward to any other upgrades to this machine. I don't see it, you know, needing anything else at this point until you know, I think maybe the CPU is just too slow for me. The battery will have to be changed out at some point in time. Maybe an increase in storage. But I think at like a 1080p screen at the 14 inch chassis size, it's a perfect resolution for this size screen. Some people say, oh, you should have more pixels, but like, why? Something I thought about years ago when I was on the go quite a bit, you know, traveling with my machine, my computer. There were often times when not being in the office, I missed having multiple screens to work out of. So, and like when I'm, when I'm here in my uh, super cubicle, whatever you want to call it, I, I have an ultra wide screen, which is basically like having two screens side by side to standard aspect ratio screen. So I don't really need an additional screen for that one at this time. But for a laptop, it's really hard to be very productive on one screen. Very often, I just need more display space. You know, cutting it in half and having two side by you know two windows side by side is okay for some things, but not a lot. So another reason I think this display resolution is perfect is because it's kind of been I don't know commoditized. It's not it's nothing special. So I, I can very easily make a small little modification here, add another 1080p screen to the top of this. Then because this is all powered by USB-C, I can very easily then have two screens stacked on top of one another. They're both 1080p and everything is just you know the same size. Yes, there is a bezel in between here. I got it, but there's no scaling that has to be done. Everything just works out perfectly. More pixels on this screen would make it almost unreadable, especially for my old man eyes. And even at this point, I do have to increase the percentage of some websites. So I don't really need a sharp resolution here. The text is crisp and this you know works out great. Now I need additional you know, reading space or you know, a spreadsheet here and a website down here, or I'm looking at designs up here and I'm comparing it to you know, a bill of material down here, I, I can, it's very nice. And I'm not tilting my head side to side, I'm going up and down with it. So there's not kind of a, any, any neck issues that I have from looking side to side. So this, I think is a great setup for me to have. This is, I typically keep this in the house, not out here. And I can just take it with me. Although it, it does, require a little bit of a tilt on this. A kickstand would be nice for the back of this, but ah, that's fine. So this is a great mobile productivity setup that I have here. Now that I got more memory, I wasn't using it anyway, but it's nice to have, you know, 64 gigabytes of RAM. So it's like my Elite Book 64. Maybe I should call it that, my E64, C64, no. Yeah, after the C comes the E, right? Be a D in there somewhere beforehand. But anyway, the raw performance of this machine, when it comes to like rendering videos, not great. Editing videos on this, especially with this stretch vertically, is awesome. The battery will need to be replaced in the, probably in the next year, maybe two, but it's already, Plasma is reporting that it is at 82% of health. So yeah, you know, it's not great. As far as like how long am I going to run this thing as a primary machine, I, I think probably until at least 2025. I can't imagine replacing it sooner than that. You know, the screen has has been kind of uh, scuffed up a little bit due to, well, life on it. I think the, um, the clearance between the screen and these buttons is a little bit too close. And uh, probably the bag being squashed a time or two was, has not helped. But anyway, I've now maxed out the memory on this, so I can't ask for anything more there. I could probably use more storage, but it's still enough for now. I think HP did a great job on the overall design of this machine. It's easy to work on, except for getting to that keyboard. To replace that, that's gonna be a, a pain. Probably at least an hour job, I'm guessing. Maybe less, maybe more. The screen quality is good, has good brightness. I don't, I don't tend to run it more than 50 or 60% usually, because I don't need to. As far as the layout of the keys, it's not the best. 
I, I, I am glad I have this menu button, but like this, and that's not really a T, not a T layout, it's a, what do we call this layout? I don't know, but this layout isn't the best, not for gaming anyway, but it's fine. It's not bad, it's fine. It, it, it's fine for doing any productivity work. I'm probably gonna keep this as my primary laptop at least for the next two or three years. I don't see a need to upgrade at any point in time. I'm very happy with what I have here. This is basically a perfect setup for me and I don't really see a need to you know, change it out. I mean, there's OpenSUSE runs fantastically on this. I've got a nice setup for a dual screen on the go. I appreciate the construction design of this machine. It's not perfect. There's some changes I would make, but as far as what's out there right now, yeah, this is pretty. Uh, this is pretty all right. So, chances are, when you see something published by me, or you see like a video or an article or whatever, very likely I edited it on this thing because it's convenient. If you like videos like this, you know, feel free to subscribe. I have more content on the way. I just thought I'd throw this out here because it was an opportunity to show you what a neat design this machine was. I'm fascinated by the engineering that was put into this particular machine. Feel free to subscribe. And if you think this video was worth it, you can hit that little uh, like. If you think it wasn't worth it and wasted your time, you can click that dislike. That's fine too. I don't really care. My feelings will only be mildly, uh, you know, affected, but I'll get over it. I'm a big boy. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see yous.